today's message is faith. And the reason we're teaching on faith today is because we have wavered in our faith, our trust, and our belief in what the Most High has said. Amen? There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about it being impossible to please God without faith. Amen? Hebrew 11 and 6. So if we are not pleasing God, we're not in faith. Amen? And so we actually have to go back and look at our life and make sure what we're doing in our lives is pleasing unto the Most High. Proverbs 13 and 12 says, Hope deferred, make it the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. So in other words, saints of God, all of you that have sown your seed for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and all the feast days, and you have not seen the miracles, the blessings, the finances, the homes, the cars, and whatever you had on your list, hope has been deferred. Amen? He did not say that he was not going to do it. Amen? It's just been deferred. Why has it been deferred? Because we've not watered our seed. We have not been consistent to do the things that we need to do. So now it's been deferred, but it's not been canceled. Amen? Because the Bible says, it says, hope deferred makes you sick in your heart. In other words, you faint. Amen? In other words, you begin to worry about your circumstances and your situation. In other words, you don't believe like you believe because you're not understanding why it's not coming to manifestation like you think it should come into manifestation because you've already prayed. Amen. Amen. So it's deferred. But because it's deferred does not mean that it's not going to come into manifestation. Because then it says, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Amen. Amen. So we have to understand that it's not on our timetable. It's not us. We have to get on his timetable. Trusting him is no matter what it looks like, no matter how hard that struggle gets, no matter if it looks like it's not going to happen for you, you still say, yet do I trust you. Amen. Job said, though you slay me, Yet do I trust you. Amen? And so, no matter what you're going through in this life, if you don't waver and you faint not, you shall receive what it is that you have asked him for. Yeah. But we have not been taught to hang on to the change coming. What did the Bible say? In all my appointed days, I'm going to wait Till my change come. You have to hold on to words like that when you're going through, when you're waiting on your miracle. Amen. You talk to the Most High. You say, Lord, in all my appointed days, I'm going to wait till my change comes. You have to talk to the Most High about your situation and your circumstances. He knows you're waiting, but you're building your own faith when you tell Him. It doesn't matter what you do. Yet, you might slay me, but I'm still going to trust you. No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to hold on till my change comes. Amen. you got to build up your own faith by continually to speak to yourself and to speak to the Most High because he's going to do what he said he would do. Amen. But you got to believe that and not waver. If you don't see it in one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, whatever, you still got to be trusted in him. Amen. You still got to hold on. Amen? Amen? That is the secret to all the answers and manifestations of your prayers. Hold on to your change coming. I, when I walk through uh, that dialysis, I, I used to tell the Lord all the time, see, you've got to get personal with him. I used to tell him, I said, Lord, you might as well go and do it. You might as well go and heal me now. I'm not going to go and get my miracle now because I'm not going to change. I'm going to hold on. Amen. And I would tell him that all the time. I'm, I'm just going to hold on. You might as well go ahead on. So you got to get a dialogue going with the Most High. Amen? Let him know, I trust you. I have faith, I believe, and I'm not wavering. Amen? It doesn't matter what you're going through. It don't matter if you've been praying for a house, a car, a business, a job, whatever it is. If you believe and not waver, how many of you know you got to be tested? Your faith has to be tested. If every time you pray, 
prayed and wanted him to do something for you and you jumped up and got it just like that, your faith can never be tested and how would he know you trust him? He will never know if you trust him if he don't test you and make you wait it out. So you can tell him, I'm going to trust you. It doesn't matter. I'm not changing. I'm not moving. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I shall not be moved. That's how you talk to him. Dialogue with him and let him know. It don't matter. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to go through what I need to go through and I'm going to come out on the other side. I'm going to get the manifestation of that which I said that I needed and desired of you. Can you believe the saints of God? Can you do it without wavering? Even in the midst of your trial, your worst, your darkest moment, when it looks like everything around you is falling apart, can't pay your bills, can't pay your mortgage, can't pay your car note, ain't got enough electricity, bills and stuff getting turned off. Can you trust it? Yes, yes. See, that's the key. Don't waver when things get hard. You praise him. He, you confuse your enemy when you begin to go into praise when you just had a bad report. Amen. So if they call me and they say, well, I'm not doing this. You're going to have to do such and such a thing, such and such a thing, and you got to pay thousands of dollars, you got to do all of this. I'm not going to fall apart. I'm not going to fall apart and say, oh, well, I'm going through this again. Because how many of you know when you're going through school and, school and life is school, you go through it and you pass those tests. I failed so many tests in life that I made up my mind, saints of God, that I'm not going to fail anymore. So whatever it is, I have to do. However long I have to hold on, I just have to hold on, and I have to have a positive confession. So I don't fall apart. I begin to praise the, the Most High. I begin to talk to Him and dialogue, dialogue with Him. And I, I used to tell Him all the time, I say, well, how long? And He said, not long. And then I go from that, not long would carry me for months. And then I come back before him, I say, well, Lord, how long? I'm not saying I'm not where I'm not wavering, saints. I'm not being in doubt. I'm saying, how long is it going to be before you do this? I know you're going to do this, but how long is it going to be? So I, that, that not long would carry me, and then I come before him again. I said, Lord, how long? And all he said, not long. But it was enough to keep me going because he will encourage you. When you're at your weakest moment and when you look like everything is falling apart and look like they've been to take and do you in, dialogue with the Most High. Because yeah. yeah. you can talk to Him like you talk to your neighbor. Right. He already knows you. He knows what's in your heart already. Yeah. So just begin to talk to Him. Walk when you're driving down the street. Get a dialogue going on with the Most High. Yeah. He'll talk back to you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we don't want our, our, our heart to get sick because our, our blessings and our prayers have been deferred. You want to stay in there and hang in there for the long haul and wave or not and watch what you say out of your mouth. Yes, yes. Because you can abort your own prayer. How many of you know, we talked about it before, the world is framed by the words of your mouth. So whatever you say out of your mouth, just know when you say it, it just entered into the atmosphere. Your words are forever settled. Yes. So you just framed it. Negative, good, bad, whatever. You framed it out of your mouth. I ain't going to never have no money. Well, I guess not. I ain't going to never get no house. Whatever you're saying that's not that you that you done already prayed and asked him for, and now it hasn't happened yet, and so you open up your mouth and abort your own prayer because you said it ain't gonna never happen. Well, that makes no sense in the spirit realm. That's not that's that's enemy talk. That's not faith talk. So God, you know, He can't help you. You just tied His hands up, and the angels that He would have sent to bring you your breakthrough and your blessing. You got their hands tied, and they can't move to the left or the right on your behalf because you just said out of your mouth, framed and said it ain't gonna happen, and so they have to take a step back. You can be right on the verge of your breakthrough and open up your mouth and say some foolishness and lose all the things.
things that you've been waiting for and believing and standing for. But the enemy has access to your mind, your thoughts, and he comes with suggestions. And he suggests to you that the Most High is not going to do it. Well, if he was going to do it, he'd have done it, done it already. That's how the enemy talks. That's how faith talks, saying, so you can't listen to that foolishness. If he comes anything, voice in your head saying he's not going to do it, you better get to rebuking that voice immediately. Yeah. Because it is not the most high. Because he said he asked anything. Did the word say that? Right. He said, and I'll do it for you. He didn't tell you when. He didn't say, I'll do it for you next week, tomorrow, next year. He said, ask anything and I will do it. We have a part to play. We have to believe it. Amen. Against all odds. And so the closer you get to that breakthrough, the enemy comes and tries to rob you of your blessing. He does it all the time. The saints have missed blessings. How many of you have felt like, oh, I'm just, just so close. I can touch this blessing. And all of a sudden it's like, whoop. Just left and never manifested. The words of your mouth. Because nobody ever teaches us the things that we should not be doing. They just kind of assume if you say it, you automatically know it. But just because you get saved don't mean you know everything that you should and should not do. Some of the stuff that you do, you've been doing it for so long that it seems natural and normal to you. Until somebody comes along and says, did you know that that's against God? And he's like, well, I never knew that. I've been doing that for 20 some years. Now it's time to re-examine yourself. Amen? So faith is so important in our walk today. If you're going to get what you believe in God for, you will have to get it by faith. Amen. 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 Romans 8, uh, 4, 18 through 21. It says, Abraham, when hope was dead within him, went on hoping in faith. Y'all know what he's talking about. Amen. When hope was dead in him, he went on hoping in faith, believing that he would become the father of many nations. He relied upon the word of the God, which definitely, believing that he would be the father of many nations, he relied upon the word of God, which definitely referred to thy seed. With undoubted faith, he looked at the facts. His own importance. He looked at that. Amen. Yet, he refused to allow any distrust of a definite pronouncement of God to make him waver. He looked at his own body, important, unable to get up there and get a seat. He looked at it. But even when he looked at his own body, knowing that there's certain things that has to take place in order for you to produce a seed. He decided up in his own self that he refused to distrust. He refused to waver because he believed in the Most High. He drew strength from his faith. That's what I'm talking about, saints. You get to talking to yourself, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. He drew strength from his own faith because he believed God. He looked at his own dead body, he, and he remembered that the Most High said, your seed is going to inherit the earth and the land. It's going to be, your seed will be like the stars and the sand. And he counted it to the Most High for righteousness. He knew that the one that said it, no matter what his body looked like, even when he looked at it, he refused, the Bible says, to allow any distrust of a definite pronouncement of God to make him waver. In other words, God pronounced that this is your seed and it's coming forth, and this is how it's going to be. When he looked at his body, he said, I refuse to let this body, after the Most High, have pronounced on me the seed. Everlasting seed, the seed of promise. Then he drew strength from his faith. I love that, saints. Think about it. He drew strength from his own faith. Because he began to think about the goodness of the Most High. 